Nobody in the world knew about Megan Fox until I found her and put her in Transformers. I like to think that I've had some luck in building actors' careers with my films. You won't see me doing Transformers 5. When I first became really interested in building furniture, I went to Toys R Us and spent $200 on Transformers toys. By taking the toys apart and studying how they moved, I was able to figure out how to hide a table leaf, what type of contraption I'd need to slide it under the table. I'm a really visual learner. Monuments Men is a movie. I don't want to say for grown-ups, because some young folks could appreciate it, too. But if you're expecting Transformers, you're going to be disappointed. Transformers was important and defining for me because it taught me about what kinds of movies I want to make and the kind of actor I want to be, and I have a long way to go before I become that actor. We've been trained to spend money since we were born with all these commercials with toys and G.I. Joes and Transformers. But there's so many things in the supermarket, there's so many things on television that automatically, when you turn it on, are saying, buy, 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 buy. I would trade places with Michael Bay when he was directing Transformers, because I'd get to meet Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, and also see what it's like to direct a huge action movie. That'd be awesome. I'm done with effects movies for now. When you do a movie like Transformers, it can feel like you're doing three movies at once, which is tiring. If you asked an 18-year-old what they want to do with their life, and the options are Transformers or Lars von Trier, he's probably shipping out four Transformers. If you ask a 26-year-old what he wants to do, Transformers or Lars von Trier, he'd probably pick Lars von Trier. So, my sensibilities are changing as I change. I grew up watching Transformers. I think it was one of the first cartoons that I started watching as a kid. It was awesome. I would set my clock every morning before I went to school. It was a big part of my childhood. I have a real weakness for Generation 1 Transformers. Only Generation 1. I loved them as a kid, and I will, when I have the money, search occasionally for the toys that I could not afford but deeply desired as a child. Everything I've tried to do at Leica, searching for an artful blend of darkness and light, intensity and warmth, humor and heart, I wanted to bring to the Transformers franchise. When I played Darth Maul, it sort of came from inside. I'm not saying it was natural, but I really enjoyed it, and I think I was tapping into my childhood, growing up with Star Wars. And I grew up with G.I. Joe as well. Same as Thundercats and Transformers and He-Man, and so I think it was the inner kid in me just came out. My dad does tons of voiceovers, he was Duke in G.I. Joe and Transformers and Handy, Lazy, and Grouchy Smuff, so I grew up with the best bedtime stories ever. Transformers, The Last Night is a different kind of movie. And a lot of the artists and people that we hired were fans of Transformers growing up, so having so many fans working on my crew really kept me on point. I was a big Transformers fan. I'm a real geek and fan when it comes to Transformers. I remember being at my first rehearsal for this film, and I looked over and saw the tractor trailer. I was thinking to myself, oh, my, that's Optimus Prime. Transformers inspired me as a kid. After school, my mom would pick me up and I would just go to visit my dad in the recording studio, and I would see him working with Mark Hamill or hear him doing the Transformers or a G.I. Joe or the Rugrats. Transformers gives people the ability to relax and rest for three hours. That's a substantial amount of time, given how plugged into our devices we are. People don't give themselves enough time to sit down. They're no longer comfortable with themselves. I loved my childhood. They had the coolest toys back then. Star Wars, Transformers, laser tag gun sets. Toy companies have really gone downhill. It's technically demanding to shoot in 3D. It's an extra element. Also, just the size of the cameras. They look like these, Transformers, monsters. They are incredibly big, many of them. Boxers, man, except when I have to get dressed up. Then it's boxer briefs. But never tighty witties. Never. But dude, if they brought back underoos, dude, if they brought back underoos, would rock the underoos. Like He-Man and Transformers and G.I. Joe and even like Dukes of Hazard. In terms of doing another franchise after Transformers, I don't know if that would be best for me. I'm really happy to inhabit the world of independent film. Why do we have Transformers 5 or 6? Because young kids will go and see it 4 or 5 times. I've been reading titles from IDW for probably as long as they've been in existence. 
Ninja Turtles is one of my all-time favorite properties ever. I also love, 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 Lock Key. I also love some of the things they do with pre-existing properties like Transformers and Ghostbusters. I describe our family as the Transformers. Separately, we can do our own thing, but the minute we start locking in, we become a force to be reckoned with. We become Optimus Prime. I've spent months living in Africa and India, so it's not like I was sheltered when I started living in America. But my family laughed when they heard I was going to be in Transformers. I learned a lot and got to experience Michael Bay's mayhem. It was a very colorful experience. With Transformers, I'm going to get to drive fast cars and have a lot of fun. That's what appeals to me about it. I want to have as much fun as possible. I want to do something that people can really say, hey, man, that was good. I'm proud of you, I'm proud of that. Pride, and Transformers, and things like that. I had, Star Wars figures and G.I. Joes and Transformers and all the posters. I loved Transformers when I was a kid. I walked out of, was it, Stardust? That thing with the witches? I was so looking forward to it, but I just couldn't handle it, man. Ten minutes in, and I was gone. I didn't have to walk out of, Transformers 2, because I didn't go. I loved the first, Transformers. I loved it, but I heard too many of my friends walked out of the second one. I've seen Transformers seven times. I cry every time. I booked Transformers having no clue what I was doing. And then, all of a sudden, it was like, you've got to get your game together fast. It sucks, but I'm trying. I grew up with a little brother, and we would always watch Transformers together, and he had all the toys. So I was really thrilled and honored to be a part of this franchise. I worked with Michael Bay on Transformers, and I got to work with the writer of Transformers, who's this really great guy whom I loved. Conventional companies try to find new uses for capabilities they already have. Transformers look at what the market needs and then go build it, hiring new people and or taking people off other jobs. Anything that I love, I love to the extreme. I'm obsessive. If it's Star Wars, if it's Transformers, if it's the Flyers, I geek out. My son craves picture books about Transformers and Ninja Turtles and the Hulk, they show one fantastic creature smashing or zapping another into smithereens on page after page. They are dull and ugly and show no interesting stories or models of conflict resolution or character building. When you're in something as successful as Transformers, you can't use it as a sales piece for your ability as an actress because it's all about the special effects. I like soundtracks. I love Hans Zimmer. The score for The Dark Knight Rises is one of my favorites. I also like Man of Steel, Inception, Interstellar, Braveheart, Transformers, Steve Jablonski with Arrival to Earth. Schindler's List, too, that's beautiful. The phenomenon of Transformers itself is mind-shaking, you know? Right now, I think robots are where it's at. And yes, I'm biased. Robots and space, because with home rocket kits and Lego Mindstorm sets, people can get involved. I was raised on Transformers and GoBots, so I can't imagine what kids who are building real robots are dreaming about. I've been the desperate writer before. I wrote a novel, and they paid me for it, and I've had those calls from my agent, and I'm like, do you need me to ghostwrite a vampire novel? What do you need? I'll do Transformers, tell me. I think there's room for people to love Transformers and love Insidious. They coexist in a happy way, in other words, my movies wouldn't exist if Transformers didn't exist, because they're an alternative to that. They're not better or worse, they're just different. The only interaction I had with my brothers is like negative attention where I basically egg them on into beating me up, which was delightful. Otherwise, it was me with a video camera jumping on a bed pretending to be the ultimate warrior or setting up my robots making a Transformers movie because I was a lonely kid. My kid will come home from seeing the latest Transformers movie and I'll ask him, how was it? Amazing. What was it about? I don't know, but it was amazing. I grew up reading 2000 AD and the occasional Transformers and G.I. Joe comic, but when I could finance comics myself, I lasted only a little reading superheroes. Visit our website for more quotes, quoting.com.